Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSRHealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSRHealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. And welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. This is a place of inspiration, education, and hope for a kinder, healthier, and more sustainable world. On this show, we get to hear from local and international thought leaders and solution seekers about the things that matter most to you, uh, talking about some of the most controversial challenges we're facing in our lives today. As you may know, um, especially since our last show with Dr. Lisa Ferrari and Dr. Carla Fry, they were talked about, as you may remember, um, their kindness patrol with kids. Yesterday was actually World Kindness Day. And I was thinking something kind of neat. I, I like to dedicate a lot of the shows. And I thought in special honor of World Kindness Day, I'd let, like to dedicate this show to you, all of you out there listening. And I'd like to also invite you to do one kind act for yourself or for someone else or for the planet. If not today, then sometime this week. So just planting that, that kindness seed for you. And speaking of kindness, I'd like to give special thanks to the generosity of our wonderful show sponsor, New Roots Herbal, for sharing in the vision of helping the world be a better place by supporting this very special program. To learn more about New Roots Herbal and their many products and services, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. And if you would like to also have the opportunity to share your beautiful products or services with my terrific audience of hundreds of thousands of monthly listeners, contact me directly through my TeresaNicasio.com website. Um, and that's Teresa with an H, T-H-E-R-E-S-A, N like Nancy, I-C-A, S-S like Sam, Sam, I-O as an octopus. And you'll find there that is actually a wellness hub of, of resources uh, that's not just about our guests, but about all kinds of other um, um, other resources related to health, wellness, psychology, uh, the environment, parenting, and all that kind of good stuff. So be sure to visit it just for fun, even if you're not wanting to be a sponsor. Um, and I'd like to invite you next session, next show. We're going to be launching our alternative health series, um, talking about crazy, sexy health with none other than Dr. Udo Erasmus. He's a Canadian um, who many of you know of because of his Udo's Choice Omega-3 fats. Um, but on the upcoming show, you, yes, he will. He will touch upon the, the fats and some of the health benefits and, and issues with that. Um, but he's also going to be sharing a bit about his incredible life. And something I learned, I, I met him at a party, actually, a New Year's Eve party of all places. Um, but he survived World War II. He was in Poland during World War II. And he's going to share about his life, his journey from zoology and psychology. This man is brilliant, I'm telling you, to bio biochemistry and nutrition and genetics um, and and also the wisdom, the inner wisdom that has come for him through, the, through his journey. Anyway, it's going to be a great show and you, you're going to want to listen in on that one. And many of you may remember that we recently st uh, started our GMO awareness series when we had Obe Giraud on the show talking about her multi-award winning film, Modified, that has been um, honored recently um, by the James Beard Foundation as the best documentary of the year. And it just so happens that featured in Obe's film was today's very special guest, environmental youth activist Rachel Parent, who's been a literal hero. She's one of my heroes. Um, my daughter, who's now 22, is the one who introduced me to her several years ago. Um, she's a global leader, and she's been speaking out about food safety and GMO awareness and food labeling since she was just 11 years old. Um, uh, Rachel, she's been a 
courageous voice providing leadership about the climate crisis, social justice, animal rights, responsible consumption, and environmental protection as well as about GMO labeling, which she's most known for. Um, similar to um, how we're now witnessing with Greta Thunberg, who is another rock star. I love her. Um, Rachel has been a passionate health and environmental advocate who was torpedoed into the public eye since her riveting debate about GMO labeling with celebrity host Kevin O'Leary on CBC television when she was just 14 years old. That was seen by literally over 2 million viewers. I've got, um, that's one of the many, one of the many YouTubes I have on her page. And if you've not watched that debate, it's not that long. I think it's about 14 minute video or so. Um, be sure to, um, you won't want to miss that. It's really, really mind boggling uh, on many levels. Um, I want to tell you a little bit more about this great woman. Um, uh, so, founder of Kids Right to Know, and now just 20 years old, Rachel is respected internationally and has already collaborated with some of the greatest world leaders in the food safety and environmental movement, including Dr. Jane Goodall, Dr. David Suzuki, as well as renowned scientists and whistleblowers, Dr. Sarah Lini, which I want her to talk about today a little bit, uh, Dr. Vandana Shiva, Dr. Shiv Chopra, uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, Jeffrey Smith, and public interest attorney Stephen Drucker. These are all incredible, incredible heroes for all of us, getting the information out that we really need. In addition to her countless media appearances, including today, uh, Rachel's also been featured in a television series about GMO labeling that was aired on Global News National, uh, resulting in Rachel meeting with uh, Kenda's Minister of Health, which was a huge milestone for Rachel and her efforts, and I'd like her to speak even briefly about that today uh, as we get into the show. Um, with a crazy long list of honors, Rachel has been recognized as one of the seven kids saving the planet right now by Elex Magazine, been included in Canada's Top 20 Under 20 Changemakers by Post City Magazine, been named one of Toronto's Environmental Heroes by Now Magazine, has been featured in the Top 30 Thinkers Under 30 by Pacific Standard, has been acknowledged as an emerging leader by the Clean 50 Summit in Toronto, been nominated as our Women of the Year by in Elle Magazine, was honored as one of the post-City Toronto's most inspiring women, was a finalist in Canada's 150s Lieutenant Governor's Visionaries Prize, and received the John Fillion Award for Community Involvement, the Lieutenant Governor's Community Volunteer Award, and the Rob Stewart Youth Eco Hero Award. Oh, my God, if any of us could do any of these things in a lifetime, it would be crazy. Uh, it's hard to believe she's just 20 now and, and really still at it. Thank you so much for taking the time away from your very busy schedule to be with us today, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me, and it's an honor to be here with you today. Oh, that's great. Well, we're going to leap right in because there's lots of ground to cover. We could be a week, folks. Uh, so I was just talking to, to, to Rachel. Uh, but I'd love it uh, if you could start by sharing with our listeners, Rachel, a bit about how it was that you became involved in environmental and food activism when you were just 11 uh, and how you found yourself on CBC television debating Kevin O'Leary, of all people, uh, when you were 14. Sure. So um, I found out about GMOs when I was 11 sort of by accident. I had always been very passionate about animals. I grew up vegetarian, and so that was something very close to my heart. And so in grade six, we were given the task of writing a speech for school, and I thought that I'd start to research things that I was passionate about. And through researching factory farming, I found out about GMOs and the impact that they were having not only on our health, but on the environment, on things like our water, our soil, even pollinators. And I immediately felt the need to do something. Um, so I think like all activism, it starts off small. Um, for me, it was trying to create a march with zero resources and zero funding. Uh, and I had to turn to social media to bring people out. And that's how things started to get the ball rolling. Um, and when I was 14, as you mentioned, with Kevin O'Leary, um, he said on public television that anyone marching against Monsanto was stupid and that if they didn't like GMOs, they should just stop eating. And I was thoroughly offended by this statement. 
I mm-hmm. felt the need to say something to stand up, so I filmed the YouTube video uh, basically challenging him to debate me on public television. I never expected him to accept, so that was definitely a surprise for me, um, and it's definitely altered my course of life and, and how I view things as well. Absolutely. Well, you know, a lot of a lot of the folks listening. Uh, well, some of you, uh, yeah, I think, especially given who listens to my show, some a lot, probably a lot of you know that uh, uh, at least a bit about GMOs. But um, but it's kind of confusing because at least in North America they're legal, and so you know, a lot, I've I've even had some conversations with folks right here in Vancouver, and where they've said, oh, what's the, what's the problem with GMOs? Well, you know, why are they a problem? So can you talk a little bit about? Um, why GMOs are a problem, and um, yeah, let's start with that, and, and, uh, and then maybe getting into why glyphosate, um, you know, what glyphosate and Roundup have to do with GMOs. Sure. There's a lot of problems surrounding GMOs. I think the first thing, starting with seed sovereignty, the fact that we as consumers and farmers are no longer allowed to save seeds when it comes to GMOs. Uh, once you start growing genetically modified foods, you have to buy the seed year after year, Uh, because you're signed into a contract. And so this creates monopolies over our food system, over our seed system, and whoever owns the food, whoever owns the seed, controls population. And this is a really uh, scary concern that we have. The other one is genetic pollution. Because these seeds are patented and owned by corporations, if seeds or pollen happen to end up in various farmers' fields, those farmers can be sued and their lands can be taken away. Um, And these are... Again, massive problems where you can't control genetics. You can't control. Um, you can't control the wind. You can't, yeah, you can't exactly. control the wind and where the birds and bees go. Yeah, that's just it. And so farmers are facing the real consequences, especially organic and conventional farmers, uh, are facing these consequences of with it's going against their own personal will. They don't want to be growing these foods, and yet this ends up on their properties. Um, and the other thing is, it's been related to a variety of health and environmental issues, as you know our health, things like allergies, digestive disorders, organ damage, even tumors, um, and then for our environment, the dying off of our bees and butterflies, that's such a huge issue, uh, new mm. super weeds, super bugs, contamination of soil and water systems, so it's very far-reaching. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't realize, and I remember when I first learned that, you know, glyphosate is, uh, you know, which is in Roundup, and, and, well, there's a lot of things in Roundup that are a problem, but, and um, I don't know if, I think I mentioned to you that uh, we're going to be having Dr. Stephanie Seneff, that MIT scientist, talking a bit about uh, um, pesticides uh, in January, but uh, uh, I didn't know that glyphosate um, until just a few years ago was is actually an antibiotic. Yes, it is, uh, and that's a, a huge problem. Monsanto actually patented it as an antibiotic, and the problem is uh, glyphosate is not only just sprayed on GMOs, it's sprayed on about 70 other crops. And so these are crops like chickpeas, lentils, wheat. They could be in almost every single meal without us knowing about it unless you're buying organic. Right. Yeah, it's a big deal. And and you, you touched upon a couple of things there right? but, uh, about some of the health things. But can you can you talk, and I know you've met Dr. Seralini, which must have been a wonderful moment. Um, can you talk a little bit about his research? Because that that is what, you know, um, really got me on fire several years ago. Uh, but talk, because not everybody listening knows about Dr. Seralini, and, and, and uh, they, might, they might have heard a little bit, but can you just talk a little bit about his research and also about um, what happened which led to the retraction of, of the research findings. Sure. So uh, I did have the honor of meeting him. It was such an incredible experience. He came to Toronto and was part of the conference that I was a part of, and he invited me into a closed-door room. I was uh, 14 at the time. And so wow. I was a room filled with scientists, um, and it was just such an incredible experience. His research was surrounding... Uh, chemical sprayed genetically modified foods. So he spent a year uh, feeding rats uh, these genetically modified food, uh, foods. He tested Roundup on its own, then he tested GMOs on its own, and then he tested uh, GMOs that had been sprayed with Roundup. And, and it was like two then, years, right? It was like for yes. two years that they were eating it? Yeah. Yes, and he found um, incredible health effects, and especially surrounding tumors. And I think the biggest thing is uh, the fact that it was published 
um, and then almost immediately it was retracted uh, simply because Monsanto scientists continued to go after uh, Eric Zerlini and were really making a big deal about um, his control group and the types of rats he used. The reality is, is that Monsanto uses the same types of rats in their studies, mm -hmm. so there really is no difference. Uh, mm -hmm. But his study was republished, and we're all very grateful for that because he really showed us the true um, toxics and dangers behind the foods that we're eating. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, I, yeah, for those of you on social media, I've posted a couple of uh, videos about Dr. Sarlina and, and Dr. Sarlini in the study, and um, I really suggest you look at it and also notice that there's been quite a few people who um, have been co-opted to uh, try to challenge it. And again, like you're saying, saying oh, it's the wrong kind of rats or whatever. And, and it was the exact same study pretty much that was done um, by Monsanto, but where they just did it for a very short time, like three months or something instead of two years, so 90 days or something instead. But um, anyway, that's a hot, that's a hot item. Um, and, and, you know, what, can you just mention briefly, I know we're going to have Dr. Dr. Seneff on in January, but I know a lot of people would be keen to hear a little bit, a snippet about um, about some of the known, you know, what, be, what are coming to be known um, uh, health problems that that uh, scientists are thinking maybe actually might be causality is always hard to prove, but certainly a correlative um, that seem to be associated with um, uh, some of these pesticides and the GM foods. Glyphosate is a, a really hot topic right now, and I think a lot of that is due to the Monsanto cases that are happening in the U.S., um, which are absolutely incredible, and it's so exciting to see that they're winning. Uh, currently, there's about 18,000 cases or more. Uh, the number continues to grow um, of people suing Monsanto for just causing their non-Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, due to glyphosate and Roundup exposure. And this is just one case, uh, one, one type of cancer, but... Uh, I was talking to the headland bomb lawyers, and they were saying there's various other cases that will be in the works for different forms of uh, cancers and diseases caused by glyphosate. And the reality is it's, it's really scary to know that not only are people being exposed to it in such high levels, but it's in our food every single day, three times a day. Uh, I'm sure Stephanie Zanep will be talking more about uh, causation with mental health issues as well. Uh, this is a big problem that we face more and more in today's society, and it is very deeply linked with our food system, uh, and so as well as kidney disease. Um, and so this is something that we really need to look into and say, why is our food poisoning our earth, and why is our food poisoning our bodies? Uh, and start yeah. to reevaluate our food system, because our food should never be something that's poisoning us. It's meant to nourish us. Yeah. Yeah, Jane Goodall said a few things about that. And, you know, whoever thought that was a good idea, you know. Um, yeah. and, I, I'm, and I'm just going to plant one little seed for you folks. Uh, and I want you to write this down if you have a pencil and pen. I want you to write down the word shikimate pathway, S-H-I-K-A, I think, M-A-T-E. or Yeah, shikimate pathway, big scientific term. Um, do some research on it. Uh, go to YouTube and, and hear some of the scientists talking about the shikimate pathway. As a psychologist, you know that that's, that's what I do for a living, uh, Rachel. It makes me crazy. Just, uh, just seeing the chicken mate pathway is kind of like Krebs cycle. It happens in all of our bodies, or it's supposed to. But one of the unknown, weird, crazy effects of glyphosate is it disrupts that natural pathway, which is the pathway that our body creates neurotransmitters such as serotonin, dopamine, um, uh, melatonin, uh, melanin. So these are things that help us with sleep, with um, um, with anxiety, depression, aggression, um, our skin pigmentation, um, epinephrine, um, norepinephrine, your know, adrenaline, all kinds of things. It's huge, guys. And um, if, especially if any of you have mental health challenges, I want you to start uh, looking into that. And in January, you're going to hear a whole lot more. So I'm just putting that little plug in because it's so important. So just, I, you know, I, I'm wondering, you know, all that you've learned since the time you were 11, it sounds like you were already a vegetarian, um, has learning what you have about GM foods and um, pesticides changed how you eat, uh, Rachel, yourself on a personal level? Completely. I mean, I think once you find out about these issues, it's very hard to not 
uh, change your diet and to not change your ways of life. I was mm-hmm. vegetarian. I always assumed that the food I was eating was healthier, that, um, you know, I was eating better than my classmates. And what I didn't realize was that I was still eating high amounts of glyphosate, which is, you know, as you were mentioning as well, uh, blocking our body's ability to actually absorb nutrients um, and creating massive health issues. So as I started to learn more and more about GMOs, I realized that I needed to change my own personal diet and move towards non-GMO, organic, real, whole foods. Um, and that's how things started to change uh, for me personally. And I think that's a very common experience within our movement as people find out more. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, like like you're saying, some people think, oh, if you're vegetarian or vegan, and, and you probably know about my book, Yum, and how it's all my daughter became vegan when she was a uh, uh, ripe old age of 12. Um, and so that whole world came into our, our family. Um, but a lot of people think if you're vegan, you're eating vegan, and you're not eating gluten, you're not eating regular sugar, or not very much of that, you're minimizing that, that you're automatically eating healthy food. But um, but you were mentioning about uh, uh, there's, there's food products out there that that people are really excited about. They're like, oh, it's ooh la la, this is vegan, impossible burger, or um, some restaurants. And just, just, you know, if you can say real quickly in a, in a sentence or two, um, you know, your thoughts about that. Sure. I'm vegan as well, and I think it's really important that we look at the type of food that we're eating. Not all vegan food is created equally. If we're eating genetically modified soy as a plant-based alternative, it's not healthy. So we need to be aware of the type of food we're eating and make sure we're doing our best to nourish our bodies and try and heal our earth as well. Yes, excellent. And and so it's not just about you know what you know, whether it's vegan or not. It's 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 uh, where it's coming from and whether it's been poisoned or not and so forth. Well, guys, we need to take a break. Time just flies here. Um, but we're going to have more with youth activist Rachel Parent when we return. So stick around. We'll be right back. Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal is your go-to product for great health. To maintain potency, Acidophilus Ultra is protected by a natural water-based enteric coating. This daily probiotic supports your health in so many ways. It helps boost your immune system, aids digestion and bloating, and that's just for starters. So remember the name, Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal. Get some now. To find a store near you, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. That's NewRootsHerbal.com Audiobooks gives you instant access to over 50,000 of the best sellers and hottest book titles in romance, mystery, fiction, and many other genres. Just visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on Audiobooks to get started. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, the blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. If you like to spend your television viewing time learning about some of the things that you may have missed in history class, or if history was your favorite subject, then you should check out the link to the History Channel on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page. Order DVD sets by series or by subject matter right from our homepage while you still enjoy your favorite HealthyLife.net show. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five six four six three. You're listening to HealthyLife.net, the radio network that brings positive talk with positive change to make your world a little better. Welcome back to the Dr. 
Dr. Teresa Nicasio show. If you are just turning in, we are here with the founder of Kids Right to Know, Rachel Parent, uh, talking about why GMO labeling is so important. And um, just before the break, we were t- we were talking a bit about um, about GMOs, what they are, the pesticides, some of the health effects, and so forth. And um, and and, and then, you know we're going to get a little bit more into the labeling and, le- and legislation um, issues, regulations. But, um, but you know this, there's uh, what a lot of people don't realize. You think of food. Well, what could that have to do with climate? Um, can can you talk a little bit about um, about your thoughts, Rachel? about how GMOs and the pesticides um, are contributing to climate change and some of the, you touched it briefly on, but a little bit more about some of the environmental impacts of, of, uh, of the agricultural practices that we have. Sure. Uh, there's so many linkages between GMOs and our current industrialized agriculture system to climate change. First of all, when we're planting GMOs, um, so there's high inputs of uh, fertilizers, so excess nitrous oxide is going into our atmosphere and into our water systems. Uh, then from cows and factory farms, there's methane. Um, and with these genetically modified foods, because they're in monocultures, generally speaking, uh, and they use high inputs of glyphosate and other toxic pesticides and herbicides, is damaging the soil, and when our soil is damaged, it releases carbon into the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. So all in all, between cutting down our rainforest to grow genetically modified soy, to factory farms, to these fertilizers, to packaging, uh, the whole picture of industrial agriculture, it's currently releasing 44 to 57 percent of all greenhouse gas emissions. Holy cow! Holy, holy cow! Yeah, we had um, uh, uh, I guess previously talking about soil health, and it's it's, it's, it's so many levels. I, those, those numbers are staggering. Um, so, you know, as a young person, and, and you do a lot of uh, with your kids' right to know, you do a lot of of mentoring and empowering young people about um, uh, you know activism and and. Um, uh, you know, take, being being uh, servants uh, of the earth, if you will, and and so forth. But as a young person, and, which you still are, and you will be for some time, twenty is still quite young. Um, uh, what message would you like to tell the other kids who uh, who may be listening and maybe are involved in marching for climate? I think marching and being active is incredibly important, but we also have to remember why we're marching. It's amazing that we were able to get more than six million people to march globally for climate strikes. But I was at my climate strike in Toronto, and um, right after the strike was done, somebody said, okay, let's go to uh, Swiss Chalet and get a steak now. No! (laughs) Yes, and I, I think there is a little bit of a disconnect between the root causes of climate Mm -hmm. change and our own personal actions. Um, Mm -hmm. And I do think that sometimes that can be disconnected. But I am so proud of all the young people, regardless, who get out there and who march and um, who take action, because at the end of the day, we are fighting for our own future. We're saying enough is enough to lobbying. We're saying enough is enough to politicians taking the sides of corporations, the corporations polluting our earth. So we are really speaking up for our future. But I do think, well, at the same time we call out corporations and call out governments, we also need to make sure that we are looking out for ourselves, looking out for our planet, and doing the best we can in our own personal lives. Yes, and the personal is political. Um, and uh, you know, when we when we have our dollar, uh, when our dollar speaks, uh, change starts to happen. I mean, I even look at Costco and look how many uh, um, sustainable and, and more. You know, they're getting more sustainable, more organic, more um, uh, products because because people are speaking. Well, that's just it. Uh, it's consumer demand at the end of the day, and that's mm-hmm. why veganism is becoming such a huge thing because grocery stores have options for vegans now. That's why organic has become such a big movement because grocery stores have options for that because we've demanded it for so long. And so uh, if you can make that choice, if you have the capability of buying organic or, or making different choices, it makes a huge difference, and corporations will listen. Mm-hmm, absolutely. 
Now, this is something that really got my attention is I, I didn't realize before, um, before learning more about you and doing some of the research um, that uh, you have, you actually attended a Monsanto shareholder meeting and, um, and so, uh, apparently uh, CEO Hugh Grant had spoke about, um, uh, about climate change and what, what, uh, you know, plant-based approach to climate change. Can you, what was that like and what, what came out of that meeting for you? That just sounds like made my head go, woo! Yeah. <laughs> it was really a crazy experience. Um, I obtained coffee from someone here and uh, was able to go on their behalf. And um, it was interesting. When I got there, we had media line up uh, for interviews. And we were supposed to. We had been in communication with various media outlets. And when we got there, uh, they assigned you a handler as an activist. So I went with two other women. Um, who are also activists, one from Hawaii and one from the U.S. Uh, both were representing moms across America. And um, when we got there, they told us that we had to stand in this square that they have created outside. They had taped it off so that we could see exactly where we had to stand. Um, and it was cold, and they had security guards uh, waiting and saying that we couldn't leave from that square. If we walked out, we could be, uh, I guess, kicked off the property, um, and so they made us wait there for over an hour and a half in the cold um, until they decided that they wanted to bring us in um, into the meeting. What they did was they got their over 1,000 shareholders uh, into the meeting beforehand as somewhat of an intimidation tactic. So when we walked in the room, almost every single person turned their head to look at us um, and the, the handler make sure that you don't talk to anybody that you don't voice your opinion, uh, that you're not allowed to stray from what they think is the path. Um, and one question period came up, uh, I was able to ask a question. So they, they put in strict rules for that, but I was able to ask two questions. The first one I said, um, if you believe so strongly that your product is safe, uh, that it is truly making the world a better place, that it is feeding people, uh, if these are all the amazing benefits that go along with your food, why do you continue to waste millions of dollars of shareholder money uh, preventing GMO labeling from becoming reality? Mm -hmm. um, and the second question I asked was why they simply won't publish their studies for independent scientists to review. On both accounts, I was told that I was too young to understand the complexities uh, of mm -hmm. these issues and that I have to learn more. The reality is you're never too young to understand that you don't want to be poisoned by your food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And they didn't answer the question then. That was their way to exactly. answer the question. Wow. And he said that his plan for climate was to plant genetically modified soy all over the world. He completely okay. omitted the fact that that's creating more carbon and contributing to climate change. Oh, my goodness. Holy cow. Well, folks, there's more to come with this awesome uh, Rachel, so stick around after the break. We're going to talk a little bit more about um, uh, the labeling and labeling legislations, regulations here in North America and around the world, and um, and where where things are where things are going on that front, um, as well as uh, getting into um, some of the things that that are the good news about what we can do and a hope for conservation and uh, regeneration and such. Um, so stick around. We'll be right back. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. You have too little time to shop. So try Farm Fresh to you. They deliver organic food the way nature intended, delivered straight to your home or office, economically, 
Visit our web advertiser page and click on Farm Fresh to You now. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore a substitute ingredient so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five sixty four sixty three. If you're not in the U.S., listen up. SureTrader is one of the most trusted and reliable names in share trading. With 6 to 1 leverage and other perks, SureTrade is the best for penny stocks and day trades. To find out more, visit our advertiser page and click on the SureTrader banner. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. Com. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. Welcome back. You're listening to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Here today with health and environmental youth advocate Rachel Parent, talking about pesticides, GMOs, and climate change. And um, we, uh, I, was, I was just talking over the break with Rachel that uh, I thought that you guys might want to hear a little bit more about what's going on currently with regard to the regulations because there's some sort of weird disconnect between what the scientists are uncovering. You've got all these, these uh, cases, you know, multi, multi, multi. Uh, um, uh, million dollars of going down to cases with because you know it's proof uh, that's um, of connection of these things and health and yet we are our regulations at least here in North America are are kind of wonky and they don't match that and they are still allowing high levels of these uh, toxins into our into our bodies. So can you just talk a little bit about? I'm just going to let you fly, uh, Rachel. Cause I know you've got lots to say about these topics. Sure. So Canada does not have nearly enough regulation when it comes to GMOs and new, as they call them, novel foods. Um, I've been trying to advocate for GMO labeling for nine years now, um, and I've met with multiple ministers of health and environment, and um, they still have not made the jump to simply give us the right to know what's in our food. Uh, Currently, 64 other countries around the world already have this right to know. And Canada and the U.S. are the only two industrialized nations in the world that don't. Um, and it's, it's rather upsetting that actually Canada is one of the most relaxed countries when it comes to uh, allowing these new technologies without labeling. One really clear example of that is the genetically modified salmon, um, which has already been approved for growing and selling. Uh, it has been sold in Canada under wraps of some form. And... Uh, it's interesting to see that Canada has decided not to label it, but they will be labeling it in the United States. The salmon is also one of the greatest threats to natural salmon uh, because it grows twice as fast and more aggressive. And if it ever gets out into nature, it could contaminate all natural salmon, which is a keystone species and affects so many other parts of our ecosystem. So this is a huge threat, and I think labeling is such an important step. It may not seem like a big deal, but having... The ability to choose the food you put in your body is important, but having the ability to choose the food system you support and the type of world you want to see is even more important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, if someone is is uh, putting out pollutants in in the air, then we all have to breathe those. If someone's putting um, uh, altered uh, organisms, which, by the way, folks, uh, there's a little cute little trick that's going on about uh, the labeling because we all most people are getting onto the whole GMO. The GMO um, is not a good thing. So, so can you just talk a little bit about how they're they're renaming it so so that people don't realize what it is? Yeah. So in the U.S. Um, it's called the Dark Act, and it was passed originally. GMO labeling was accepted in Vermont, and it was the first state to get 
real GMO labeling. It lasted for about two weeks before it was overturned. Um, and of course, that's because millions and millions of dollars were spent by biotech. Um, and then they passed the Dark Act, uh, which basically was dubbed Deny Americans the Right to Know. Um, and they replaced labeling with a QR code. Uh, this QR code, you'd have to scan it, and they didn't require you to say if it actually did contain genetically modified foods or not. It was basically voluntary labeling through a QR code. Um, and not only that, but it's inaccessible to large portions of populations who maybe don't have smartphones. So it's exclusionary, and it doesn't tell consumers what's in their food. Um, and now they've decided to create a new label that says, and it basically has a smile, and they made colorful fields and tried to make it exciting, and they're trying to rebrand it as bioengineered to be healthier and better for the environment. And so it's... Um, there's misadvertising that is really concerning because they could be misleading consumers to believe that they're eating good, healthy food when they're eating chemical toxic foods. Right, and, and GE is this new term as opposed to GMO. So people might see GE and, uh, and think, well, is that, is that like a, a dishwasher? Or, you know, it's like, what, you know, how would you know what a GE food is or um, genetically engineered? And, and yeah, so, so kind of messing with our minds. Again, as a psychologist, it makes me really uh, upset when, when there's this abuse. And one of the core, one of our core rights in life is, uh, is informed consent. And I, it's, I, I, it's just, it boggles me that, that uh, policymakers are making it okay to, to put the wool over our eyes and, and make us say, oh, that's okay. Yeah, exactly. It's very frustrating. And our government continues to side with corporations. I met with an MP and he said that even if 99% of his constituents wanted GMO labeling, that he wouldn't do it because it goes against his own moral values. Mm -hmm. I later found on that his moral values are that he rents out his land to a farmer who grows genetically modified uh, crops and gets royalties off of that. And so it's this um, allowing of politicians to have corporate interests that I think is extremely scary. And at the end of the day, I think Health Canada and our government is at fault for all of this environmental and health decline. Um, mm -hmm. If it weren't for them, of course, corporations are going to do what corporations do. Mm -hmm. But uh, our government is supposed to be looking out for us as public servants. They're supposed to yeah. be making sure that the food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe is safe, and they're not doing their job. Yeah, the, uh, the watchdogs to, to protect us and not. Um, and, and you, in addition to uh, Kids Right to Know, you have another organization that, that you, you uh, helped, I think, launch, and you're the director of, uh, called Gen Earth. And, and you also, um, you, you met uh, Ob, who we had on this show, as I mentioned before, the, uh, the, the incredible documentary filmmaker. It's, it's such a great movie, guys. you got to watch it. Um, can you talk a little bit about your relationship with Ob, how you met, and, and maybe even a, a snippet about um, about what you're doing with Jen Earth. Sure. Uh, Ob is such a dear friend of mine. I love her. Please go watch the film. It is truly my favorite documentary. Uh, I'm not biased at all. but uh, Me too. Me too. I, I love it. <laughs> the it's heartwarming. It's beautiful. Modified one more time. It is such an amazing documentary. Uh, she documents her 10 years as being a part of the GMO labeling movement as a part of trying to get transparency, um, and it's incredibly inspiring how she connected that to the true feelings of how we are as activists, the struggles we go through, trying to fight for basic rights that we deserve. Um, and so, yeah, Olga is an incredible person. She reached out to me after the debate to do an interview, um, and we've been friends ever since, and mm. uh, always bump into each other at various events and try and help each other out in any way. But please oh, go watch the film, docu uh, the documentary, Modified. Yeah, you might even. I think that they even have the DVD available for sale. You can pick it up, and it's you know, it's you know, and then you can watch it as many times as you want. It's it's really it's a beautiful. It's a love story with her with her mom. Sadly, and in the journey, her mom was also a gardener, an organic gardener, um, but she was exposed. She was in a place where there was lots of um, poisons. Pesticides, and sadly, during the movie, her, her mom dies, which is heart—it's just like heart wrenching. Um, but yeah, definitely. Okay, guys. So
So now we've been talking about all the things that keep us up at night. But what we're going to talk about after uh, after the break is is what gives uh, Rachel hope for the future. What um, you know, what what inspires her, and what we can do um, uh, in terms of what you know what's being done and what we can do, how we can be um, a part of making things better, and also just finding ways that we can um, uh, be healthier for ourselves, our families, and 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 even our future generations. So stick around. We're going to be back talking about hope. It's, we're going to bring some sunshine um, to these to this darkness. Uh, uh, we'll be right back after the break. Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal is your go-to product for great health. To maintain potency, Acidophilus Ultra is protected by a natural water-based enteric coating. This daily probiotic supports your health in so many ways. It helps boost your immune system, aids digestion and bloating, and that's just for starters. So remember the name, Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal. Get some now. To find a store near you, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. That's NewRootsHerbal.com VMware is a fresh perspective for virtualization on the cloud. Shaping the future, this all in one platform delivers virtual cloud service on any cloud. Visit our HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on VMware. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore a substitute ingredient so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five sixty four sixty three. For the best in business class travel, count on Cheapo Air. Cheapo Air has the best price guarantee, 24-7 customer service, and easy booking online or by phone. To experience your hassle-free journey, start by going to HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on Cheapo Air. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, Food is medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions. The award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. We're here today with internationally respected food safety and environmental youth activist Rachel Parent talking about ways we can be kinder to ourselves, our soil and pollinators, um, and the countless other species that we share the planet with, and this being kind of world kind of world kindness week, I'll call it. Uh, yesterday was World Kindness Day. Um, it couldn't be more timely. Um, can you know? Let's let's talk about what what there is um, you know in terms of hope. And one of the things that we were talking about during break was about regenerative agriculture. Can you can you talk about um, about that a bit and you know why that gives you hope? Sure. So I think one of the things we always hear is you know the issues with climate change, but we don't often delve into the solutions as much as we should. And mm. as much as agriculture can be one of the greatest contributors to climate change, it is also one of the greatest solutions that we have at our disposal. Uh, basically, when our soil is damaged, it releases carbon. But if we nourish our soils, it has the capability of absorbing carbon and starting to mitigate this process because even if we were to cut all fossil fuels today, it still wouldn't be enough. We need to uh, start to absorb it from the air and bring it back into the soil where it belongs. 
Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, and Dr. Phil Gregory was on the show just a, a little while back, um, and he was talking about soil degradation and desertification, and it's um, and was the World Health Organization had said that that you know we're basically we only have how many years left of uh, topsoil before we're going to be out of it? Uh, it was not very many years. Yeah, it's, it's very few years. It's less than sixty years, they say. Uh, yeah, before yeah. topsoil goes, and, and that's a huge part of what glyphosate does as well, is it's damaging our topsoil so much. Um, so it's important that we switch to these systems and make sure that we have nutrient-dense uh, foods available to everybody. Yes, absolutely. And and you were telling me about, and I and I saw um, I, I saw in social media actually that there's a wonderful uh, wonderful farmer, um, uh, organic farmer, Alana. I don't know how to say her name, but Kramarchik, um, and uh, who just seems like a, a, a ray of sunshine and hope herself. Can you talk a little bit about what Alana is doing and and with and with her farm and maybe even how people might be able to learn more about it. Sure. So Alana is such an incredible person. Uh, I've had the honor of knowing her for some years now, and she started a farm called Earth Valley Organics. Uh, she's the definition of an organic regenerative farmer. But more than that, she's an earth warrior. She's an environmentalist. She's a human rights activist. She's everything. She is the most mm-hmm. incredible, well-rounded person uh, I've ever met, and she cares so deeply about leaving the world a better place for generations to come. Um, and she exemplifies that with her farm. She has created the safe haven for pollinators, for animals, for uh, ecosystems to be able to thrive and regenerate and heal themselves. Uh, so she's, she's my inspiration, and she's what keeps us going in this fight, knowing that there are farmers just like her um, that are, are really caring for our futures. Oh, it's so great. And I just saw something on her page, I think it was, that she posted about, you know, using um when you when you have when you have uh nutrient filled um filled uh organi- um um like food and, and plant products, the organisms can be healing. And I saw this thing like of a horse's leg that had been injured. And, um, and uh, you know, so if you have things that are life-giving, it, it does that. But when the, when the soil is dead, all of the organisms are dead because they've been killed with pesticides and such, um, we, it, it really impairs healing. Exactly. And that's why it's important to create those um those safe havens like she has where we can grow healthy medicinal foods uh, and herbs as well. And it's, that's very, very important for the healing process. Food is our medicine at the end of the day. Excellent. And can you share with the listeners a little bit about what's this, this whole the conservation program you're involved with? That, um, not that you're not busy enough, um, but you need a few more things to do, Rachel. Um, and yeah, by the exactly. way, she's a university the student, guys, too. She's, like, working super hard. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, last year was my first year doing this, and then this year the project grew uh, exponentially. So I started raising monarchs because one of the biggest things that we have right now is uh, monarch populations decreasing dramatically. This year they're on the rise, thankfully, uh, and that's in part by a lot of efforts made by people to try and cut down on pesticide use and try and plant uh, milkweed. But because these butterflies have to fly over Texas, they have to get to Mexico, a lot of them end up suffering due to glyphosate and pesticide exposure and there isn't enough milkweed for them along the way. So we created a haven for them, of course, uh, and this year we released over 600 uh, monarchs to begin their migration journey. So it's been a really exciting project and just learning so much about not only monarchs but how they represent so much of the entire ecosystem. When a monarch population is going down, it represents all of the other pollinators, all of the other key species that are also being affected just as much. Mm, yeah, fantastic. Um, and, uh, and and uh, I just also saw that you said something about bird seed. I just want you to mention that because that was some, uh, that was just something that just like my brain hadn't even gone there. Um, why is it important to um, to use if you're gonna if you want to put bird, bird seed uh, bird feeders out? Uh, why we need to think about the kind of bird seed? Well, I noticed um, a couple years back because I always love nature and being outside and being with birds and and insects, and I noticed that the seeds that I was feeding to birds contained genetically modified corn, canola. Also, I knew that it had been sprayed with glyphosate and other chemicals, 
And so you think that you're doing your best by by providing these birds with something to eat, but at the same time, the very food that you're providing is actually poisoning them, and birds are also eaten by other species, and so, the you know, the effect goes on and on. Uh, it mm-hmm. doesn't just end with that bird. Um, so it's really important to make sure that we're in peace and harmony with everything around us and trying our best to make sure that if we're going to help nature or, or try and provide for our birds and other species that we're doing it in the healthiest way possible. Yes, yes. And if there was, you know, a, a sentence or two of what else, be, so these are some ideas of what you can do, folks. Um, is there anything else that you would recommend um, to our listeners uh, who uh, who want to also be um, take action and to help turn this boat around? What would you suggest to them? Uh, buy organic when possible. Buy non-GMO. Um, Organic is important because it doesn't have GMOs or pesticides or herbicides. So if you can, that's an important decision to make for yourself and for the planet. Um, Join a community garden. Be a part of the regeneration movement. Help a local farmer out. Support local food economies. You can also follow us for updates on campaigns. You can join us. Um, One thing I know it's terrible to always ask, but... We need people to care. We need people to be a part of this change. And uh, one of the biggest things that we struggle with as an organization is uh, making and having fundraising. So if you can, small monthly donations would really help us to move faster and make a bigger difference. We are really trying to wake people up about why we need healthy food and why everyone deserves the right to healthy food while protecting our climate. So if possible, Uh that would be an incredible action to take. Perfect. So to to help contribute to those um, to some of these organizations and to learn more about uh, Rachel and the, and the organizations, you can get all the links and to her social media and all that good stuff um, uh, on the TeresaNicasio dot com website. Thank you so much for joining us today, Rachel, and for all the great work you're doing to help educate and empower all of us. And I also want to thank all of you out there tuning in and say thank you again to our show sponsor, New Roots Herbal, for making this program possible. Um, Be sure again next time, uh, join us when Udo Rasmus will be with us. And to learn more about all of our great guests and access uh, uh, loads of free wellness resources, visit TeresaNicasio.com, that wellness hub there. Um, I'm Teresa, and this has been the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Until next time, for World Kindness Day and beyond, be kind to yourself. All right. Take care. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com.